Hi guys, it is Mary and with Stamps and Lingers and it is 2 o'clock on Saturday, which means it is time for my portion of our Ornate Garden Facebook Live event. And I hope you are having a good time with us so far. Amy had an awesome project and I hope to do even half as good as she did on her video at one. So let me just go ahead and get refreshed over here off of the side to be sure that in fact, I am transmitting on the group that I think I'm transmitting on, because if I'm not, I've screwed up and have to start over. And yeah, I don't know what, I don't see myself here. So just a second, guys, hang on, let's see what we got. Uh, well, I have people watching, but I don't know why I can't see myself. Am I in the right group, you guys? Let's be talking about what's, what matters. Am I in the right group? Hang on a second. Oh, my Lord. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see myself. Yay, it's working. Okay. All right. So um, unlike Amy, who specializes in clean and simple, and I frequently and often see her cards and think, man, I wish I had made that clean and simple card. And then I go cut 600 layers to make my own card. Um, I am much more of a layers person. And so that's what you're going to see today. Now, I have shamelessly case this card fold from my friend Karen, who you are going to see a little later. Um, so all credit for this fun fold goes to her, but I did modify the paper. So there you go. It's all my paper all the time. So this is the card and um, I did use both the Ornate Thanks stamp set. I love this set. It has so many wonderful sentiment combinations. It's just crazy. Um, and I love the delicate little font that they've used for most of the sentiments to go with the, the bigger, more bold sentiments. So this is a wonderful stamp set. It's photopolymer, so you can line the sentiments up perfectly. And then I also used this little image and this image from the Ornate Style. I have to tell you guys, we have got a lot of flower images and we have a lot of daisy images that are really cute. But this particular daisy image just does it for me. Um, so I, I don't know why, but if I didn't like any of the other images in this stamp set, which I actually do, I would have bought it just for that daisy right there, straight up. Now, the, um, the bundles that go with these, the, or the dies that go with this ornate style is actually bundled with the, um, oh goodness, I had it written down. It's with the, um, ornate borders or ornate layer blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes i just got this mouth this morning and so uh excuse me so the ornate style is actually bundled with ornate layers and the ornate thanks step it stamp set is actually bundled with the ornate borders now i did not use ornate borders for this one so i'm going to set it aside um, but I also use the stitched rectangles, which, as Amy mentioned, really coordinates quite nicely with many of the dies in the ornate layers. So that is very handy, and I made use of that coordination today. Okay? All right. Hey, guys, so just so you know, there's a lot of comments coming in, which means I may or may not see you. I am not blowing you off, I promise. Okay? All right, so let me show you how fun this little, this little um, fun fold is. That's why we call it that. I'm going to untie this bow, and what you will then see is that this is really two cards. You have this larger card with two folds on it, and then on the front is a smaller card. So you get two, two, two cards in one. Lots of room to put DSP, lots of room for sentiment, so it's kind of fun, and then when you're ready to be done, you just tie it up and it is perfectly shaped. It actually fits perfectly in a medium uh, envelope. So that is cool. Let us go ahead and get startled, shall we? Um, the card cuts, this will be on my blog tomorrow. So all of the card cuts and the product list will be there. You don't need to even write it down. So just sit back and watch. Um, I just got through typing the blog post and I can assure you this card is much easier to demonstrate on a video than it is to speak to and write about. So. Um, if you read the directions tomorrow, please don't be thrown off. This is a really, really easy card fold, okay? So we've got, I'm going to have our envelope. I've done a little bit of pre-cutting because really how many times can you watch me die cut? 
Um, and as Amy said, the ornate layers are relatively ornate. You know that because it's um, in the name. And so it will help you immensely if you have the uh, die brush uh, accessory for your take your pick tool. And I actually also use the precision uh, die plate, which is still something that I had before we stopped carrying it. Uh, you can do it without it. It may take several rolls back and forth through your big shot and then employ that uh, that brush and it'll get all those little die cuts out and you'll be ready to go. Easy peasy. Okay, the first card, which is the larger one that we're going to work on, is a five and a half inch tall by 10 inch long piece. And we're going to score it twice. The first is at four and a quarter. And then the second one is at eight and a half. Okay, so here's a little tip I'll give you about making fun fold cards. If you are making a card that you want to stick in an envelope, you need to be making sure that your folds are at least four and a quarter inches apart where you're large. So it, it can't be any wider than four and a quarter, right? Or it won't go into the envelope. And the height still needs to be five and a half so that your basic card, when it's all folded up, is still four and a quarter by five and a half. Otherwise, it won't fit in the envelope. Okay, so that is that fold. And then the tiny little, our little mini me card on the front is three inches tall by seven inches long. And across the seven inch line, I'm going to score at three and a half, which works out to be half of the length. Okay, so let's put our Simply Scored away and we'll get started. Now, this is exactly the second time I've made this card. So um, if and when I screw it up, uh, you know, I apologize right up front. So we're gonna go ahead and make these folds. And do take time, sometimes, you know, if you get a, a little bit crookedy on your scores, you wanna make sure that you're lining it up so that your, your folds are actually straight, okay? Then we'll just fold the other direction, like so, and give it a crease with our bone folder. And since we're creasing and folding and folding and creasing, we are going to go ahead and do the small card as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and work on the little card to start with. Um, I'm going to take a P these are the these are the DSPs that I chose. This is my favorite DSP in the set right here. Um, I love it a lot. Close second would be the one with the multicolored daisies on it. I'm, I must be having like a daisy decade or something. Daisies are really doing it for me right now. So I've used that one and then this little this more sedate one. Um, and so I'm going to use it for the smaller uh, the smaller panel. And we're gonna use a little liquid glue and mat it on some crushed curry. Now, we have all acknowledged that there are there is at least one new in color in this, and we know it because it was listed on the colors list on the DSP, and it's called Bumblebee, which makes me think that it is the darker of the colors, but the darker of the colors also kind of goes well, you see that light color kind of matches crushed curry, and so maybe it's that dark color. We haven't really decided. I mean, what do you guys think? I don't think it's that one, because that's more like very vanilla. But I'm thinking it's this dark one. I could be wrong. But I am using crushed curry because I don't have bumblebee. If I had bumblebee, and I will soon in May, because I'm a demonstrator, and I get to order ahead. Yay! I hope I get to order some bumblebee stuff. That's what I would use. Okay, so I'm putting this on what is actually the front of my card on the smaller panel, like a shoe, like a shoe. And then I'm, this is the front of the big one. What I did to make this is I took a piece of my daisy paper and with a stitched rectangle die, I cut a rectangle out, okay? So step one, quite simple. Everybody can do it, even a trained professional like myself. And then I'm gonna use a little liquid glue here and adhere this to my crushed curry mat. And we'll put a little liquid glue around the middle, although it's not really important because we're going to um, layer right over the top of that. Okay, so we'll get that adhered like so. 
Let me see if I can see any. I know, Faith, I am so excited for the new in colors. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm always interested to see them, but this year, for some reason, I'm really, really, really excited. Okay, so this was the, um, it, this was this die cut right here. Okay, this is going to be a workhorse. I'll tell you what, this is actually a workhorse kind of layering die set. There are a lot of things to do with this die set. Um, over and above what you might do with the Ornate Garden Suite itself. So this will be a really good one to have in your kit bag. So this is this die right here out of um, Gold Glimmer paper. And I'm just going to use liquid glue to adhere that over the hole that I created. Okay. And I do like how this gold goes with this pretty paper, don't you? Now, if you guys have not, if all of your experience with glimmer paper has been with the old style, then you are going to gasp in astonishment when I get ready to do what I'm fixing to do, which is use liquid glue to adhere the piece of paper to the glimmer paper. You remember our old glimmer paper did not work so bueno for adhering things over the top. But this new formula is way better for that. Oh, also, by the way, it doesn't spread glitter all over the place. Okay? Uh, any hooch. So, let me put that in the center here. And I did uh, try to keep the right side up and the upside down so that all of the flowers lined up. So it's a little bit like a triple time. A little bit like a triple time. But not really. It's more like just a, you know, I cut it out. Okay, so now that that is done, we're going to put that on the front of our card. My dog is outside in the beautiful weather. It's a gorgeous day here in Georgia as we wait for round two of the thunderstorms to come tomorrow evening. Apparently this is going to be a thing. Sunday into Monday night, we're just going to be doing um, thunderstorms. So I'm excited for that. You know how I feel about thunderstorms. So what I want you to see here is when this is laid over the top, which is how the card is going to be, do try to eyeball that so that those are uh, lined up there, okay? If it isn't, is anybody going to send it back? Is the card police going to show up at your house? No, but, you know, it's just a nice thing to do. It's one of those little details. Okay, so that is really it for this until we get to the inside, and we're going to do it last just because I like to keep things simple. So let's go ahead and make our smaller card pieces right now. I have two small pieces of Whisper White. They're the same size and a and Crushed Curry mats. So let's go ahead and get those made stamped up here. Okay, you knew I was going to stamp at some point, right? You must have known. Okay, so for both of these, the very first thing I'm going to do is take this Flourish image from the... Um, Oh, let's see, what is that? The Ornate Style Stamp Set. And we're going to stamp it in the corners of both of these panels. We're gonna do that in Old Olive, okay? Now here's a little tip I learned. I like, when I do four corners of something, I really want them to be kind of all lined up in the corner in the same way, so uh, equidistant from the edges of the paper on all four corners. So what you can do here is once you've put your sticker on, if you line up the edge of the actual stamp, not the image, the stamp with your edges of your cardstock on all four corners, then you're going to be pretty close to accurate. Okay? Again, does it matter? Will the police come? No. But it's the little things that make me happier. Okay, and so we're just going to turn that like that. And do that again. One more time, a uh, one more time, a uh, one more time. That was my Lawrence Welk impression right there. How many of you remember Lawrence Welk? Show of hands. We watched that every single Sunday in my grandmother's house. I didn't really care for it. But I did get amused when my grandfather would say, and the one, and the two, and the three. He would say that sometimes to me. Okay, here we go. 
Remember, this is Old Olive. This is a great color palette in this um, stamp set. We've got espresso, and we've got mint, and we've got olive, and the yellows, so it's a nice combination. Very, it's actually kind of an old-fashioned color scheme, isn't it? Okay. Now, yes, you watched Lawrence Welk. There we go. Or you could use the stamp -a -jig. That is true, but, um, you know, it works pretty well just like that. The old Mark I eyeball. Okay, so the inside of my card, of my little card, just says, you're amazing. And this one just says, just wanted to say. But um, I... I'm changing it up just a little bit because I need a card for a new team member. So what we're going to do, just wanted to say on the front, but I got to find it. It's on one of these blocks. Here we go. Nope, that's your amazing. Here we go. This one has to be it. There we go. Just wanted to say. So I'm going to put it in terracotta tile on the front like so. And again, I'm just eyeballing it to make sure it's sort of straight, right? I mean, you know, sort of straight. Really straight would be ideal, but I will settle for sort of straight most of the time. Okay, so there's that. And now let me show you a little trick that I'm going to do. Because I want to stamp that wonderful, my favorite flower image over the top of this. But if I do it straight like that, you are not going to be able to read that sentiment because it's going to be covered up too much. So... What I did is I took a piece of sticky note, the sticky end, and I just cut a narrow strip. And I'm going to go ahead and mask off that sentiment like that. And then I'm going to add my flower over the top, like so. Okay. And then pick up our mask, and there you have it. Now, I'm going to color that with my light So Saffron blend, and I'm just coloring the center and the edges, of the, the ends of the petals, just like that. And that's it. Very simple. Okay? Now, on the inside... Before, I put, just wanted to say you're amazing, but this time I'm going to use a stamp set that demonstrators can get, and it's going to say welcome to the team. So now my card, my front card is going to say, just wanted to say welcome to the team. Okay, and I'm going to set that aside and put my ink pads away ink pads away because you know I can make a mess quicker than anybody I know okay now let's go ahead and map these up on our crushed curry that is our suitable substitute for bumblebee for bumblebee I think it's going to be a suitable sub. I do. All right. Here we go. Are you guys loving terracotta tile? I really, really do like terracotta tile. It's a great color. Just a little pink, just a little red, just a little orange. Basically, it's kind of like just right. Hello. Okay. Now, here is a trick, and I'm telling you this because I screwed it up the first time I made this card. Okay, so let's get back to our, uh, let's go ahead and put the inside in. The innards can go in because that's not tricky. The outards have to wait a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that on the inside. And it does help if you can kind of, you know, orient yourself. You're going to open this way, so if you want it right side up. And there we go. Like so. Okay, now do not put the card front on yet. First, we're going to adhere this little mini me card to the front of your fun fold card. Okay, like so. 
So I'm just going to use liquid glue oh, on about the first inch or so. And again, with my Mark I eyeball, I am just lining that up ever so perfectly accurately. I mean, that is like a space shuttle right there. That is space shuttle accurate right there. Just saying. I mean, I don't want to brag, but it's pretty darn accurate. All, all awful lined up right there. Okay. And I also didn't get any glue over here, so bonus. Okay. Now let's put that away and pull out our ribbon. All right. Now, we're going to... Now, we have acknowledged in the past, those of you who are accustomed to watching me, that I don't do bows very good, especially freehand bows on stuff. So I tend to make a little extra. So just wrap it around like so. And you can leave it lay just like that. And here's why. You're going to put dimensionals, yay, on the back of the card front. And you're going to pop it over the ribbon like that so that the ribbon is captured by your dimensionals. Does that make sense? You're going to capture. It's like capture the flag, only it's capture the ribbon. And I'm putting my dimensionals on. Yes, my little half pieces of dimensionals. Here's a tip. Do not put your dimensionals in the middle of, right in the middle of the cardstock because that's where your ribbon wants to go. Now this actually might be a really good spot to do the put your dimensionals on the cardstock, on the card, not the card front um, technique, but you can see I did not do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and open this up. By open up, of course, I mean take off the dimensional covers. Flip them every which way from Sunday, because that is how tidy of a housekeeper I am. Yay! Now you know how to do that. I don't know what that is exactly, but okay. Oh, maybe capture the ribbon. Is that what we mean? Okay. So let's be sure that we're right side up and center our ribbon again where we want it. You actually could use a little length of snail there if you wanted it, but I am not because that would be too easy. And then adhere this right on the front, just like on the front of a regular card, okay? And then we can wait on the ribbon. We're gonna go ahead and do our innards and then we will be done ski with the card ski, okay? On the inside, my card says, thanks for Thank you. I'm just going to say thanks. Um, let's see, which one would I, was I going to do? I was going to use thanks ever so much. So I am just going to... Where are you, thanks? I'm going to stamp thanks in terracotta tile. Hmm. Where did my terracotta tile go? Oh, there it is. Under the old olive. You sneaky thing. See, I was talking good about it, and it went crazy. and just went just went crazy. So right in the middle, I'm going to stamp thanks. Hold a beat to let it get a good uh, stamp. And then in crushed curry, thanks Mary, I'm going to add my ever so much sentiment. And one thing that's kind of fun is uh, with this stamp set is to kind of bump the sentiments together and give them a little bit of an offset. So thanks ever so much. Let's do a quick round with our um, flourishes. And we're getting almost done, almost done. I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay, so again with the flourishes and lining the edges up. I like these little flourishes. They're a nice kind of non-specific decoration, right? They're not real flowery, not too ornate, regardless of the name of the stamp set, but pretty nonetheless. Okay, now while I have it out, let me put two more on my envelope so that I don't have to pull it out again because I am so efficient. That is my middle name, is I am so efficient. And I just got some terracotta tile on that. 
but that'll be okay. We're going to just hide it and then, you know, it'll be okay. Okay. Now I'm going to um, wipe my fingers off because apparently I have some ink somewhere. We'll put that aside. Put that aside. And mat our sentiment on our crushed curry. All right. And I'm sorry I'm taking so long, you guys. My goodness. You'd think I'd be faster. No, you wouldn't. If you watch me at all, you know I'm not fast. That's just not my thing. I'm a yucker. I'm a talker. I'm a not-so-fast carter. That's a, that's a song. I'm a maker. I'm a taker. No. I don't know. And then we're going to put it on the inside of our card. Uh, it would help if I made sure we were right side up still. Yep. Okay. And then we're just sticking it on the inside of our card like so. I love this fold. It's so easy. Looks complex. Is not at all. And then we're going to go ahead and tie our bow. Now this, I did discover a couple of little tricks. If you do what I was taught a long time ago as a surgeon's knot, so you go through uh, once and then go back through again. It helps to hold the ribbon in place so that you can, um, it's like having a third finger, makes it so it doesn't slide quite so easy. And then actually I used the um, bunny ears method for this. Make two loops that look like bunny ears and go back through and that tended to make my nicer bow and it lined it up the way I wanted it to, and then I could pull it to make it a pretty bow instead of looking like like my bows usually look, which is blah. And then we'll trim the edges, which by which I mean, of course, the ends. And then let's go ahead and put one of our small um, gilded gems right on the card front. Like that. And there's the card. We'll finish off our envelope with some more of the DSP on the envelope flap. Because that's just how I roll. It's how I roll, I'm just saying. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. See that pretty paper on the back? This works great. You can color it with blends. You can color it with ink and a blender pen. Or you could color it with uh, Stampin' Write markers if you wanted. Or watercolor color pencils. Uh, it's very pretty paper and it colors nice. Nice. It's smooth. Real smooth. And I got lucky right there because I was yakking and not paying attention. And I put it with the flowers going up instead of the flowers going down. So... Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good any day. And we'll just give a little quick fussy cut. And that'll be the end of that, folks. Like that. So there you go. I don't know really what this card fold is called. Maybe it's a card on a card card. But uh, it's fun and it is cool. And it gives you a lot of space for sentiments and for writing a note. Um, and it's got a little good wow factor, especially with that sparkly gold glimmer. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoy the rest of our uh, Facebook event. And uh, we'll see you around the blogosphere. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.